Hello there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am talking about a few things specifically around the DJI Inspire 2, the Mavic Pro, and the DJI Spark. They've been very busy in the last week and they've pushed out an app update, DJI Go 4.1.18, and they've also pushed out new firmware for the Inspire 2, which is version 01.01.0200, and there is some stuff in here I feel I want to talk about. So I will start with the Inspire 2, basically. With this new firmware, which I said was version 01.010200, they have made some quite big changes people need to be aware of. The first is it's fully supporting with the X7 gimbal now. Um, the next things they have done is they've uh, added some new features within the software, so they have updated Cinecore to Cinecore 2.1. So just to explain that a little bit, Cinecore is the combination of hardware and software that encodes the video from the camera and puts it onto either your SD card or the SSD card that goes in the back. Now originally when DJI shipped the Inspire 2 it was called Cinecore 2.0. They've now, with a software update, brought that up to 2.1. So it isn't any hardware change. All the Inspire 2s are exactly the same. It is purely a software change to bring it up to level 2.1. With regards to that, you get a whole host of new features, which is um, a whole new DJI color system when used with the X5 and X7S. And they have added a new EI mode in the camera settings, again, only for the X5S and the X7. EI stands for Exposure Index. Now, this is a bit of a complicated subject, which I'm not going to get into too deeply, but the basics of EI are, it is a set of settings which allow you to set the exposure on the camera. So, whereas ISO is a method of determining how sensitive the sensor is to light, EI is a method of setting exposure based on the existing light level. So it allows you to work with the highlights, the low end, either close down the dynamic range or move the middle greys in the video footage. It's quite a complicated subject. DJI have released a white paper for the X5S and EI, and I'll put a link to that in the video. But that is a new mode which they have added, which is most welcome. Um, along the way, they've added autofocus in both active track and spotlight modes. Now, what that means is the way when you are in those modes, you can have the option that it will automatically refocus when the distance changes between you and the subject. Now, it's not a synchronous autofocus, so it's not continuously focusing, but what it does is if it detects the distance between the tracked object and the aircraft has changed, it will automatically refocus just like it does in AFC mode. So whilst it's not continuous, it's just like if it moves, autofocus. If it moves again, autofocus and lock. Move again, autofocus and lock. It's an interesting addition. I haven't played with it a lot myself, but it'll be interesting to see how that one works out. The next big thing they have added is the ability to use head tracking flight and head tracking gimbal with the DJI goggles. So finally, the Inspire 2 is fully compatible with the DJI goggles via HDMI and USB. Um, another couple of things they have added which they don't specifically mention in the release notes. The first, and this is actually quite a, a big one really, is they have added the ability to adjust the gimbal yaw just like you can adjust the gimbal roll to get your horizon straight. So within the app, and I will show this a little bit further on in the video, whereas before you could set your gimbal horizon and set it permanently, you can now set the gimbal yaw position permanently as well. This has been done because some people would complain that their camera wasn't always pointing straight. So you now finally have the ability to do that. And I'll show you that a little bit on in the video. Um, overall, the update for the Inspire 2 is quite a large one. Um, there isn't a battery update in this one, so you don't have to worry about updating your batteries as well. A couple of other things they've done is they fixed a couple of issues with the remote controller wouldn't work quite properly with the gimbal when you were using dual ops with the Sundance. And they have added the option to pitch and 
um, drop the camera to center when you land. So what will happen now is, whereas before if the camera was pointing down when you were trying to land it would stay there, now because of the larger lens on the X7, the camera will automatically pitch up as you come down to land. Also with regards to that, it means they've adjusted the way it does the gimbal calibration as well. So whereas before the gimbal would do a large dance, now it actually only moves in the yaw axis a little bit to calibrate compared to what it did before. So you will notice that change as well. Okay, moving on to DJI Go 4. They have released version 4.1.18 for iOS. And with this comes a few updates for both the Spark and the Mavic Pro. Um, for the Mavic, they've added pano shooting modes, so that's coming with version 1.410 firmware. That hasn't landed as of today yet, but hopefully it won't be long. And for the Spark, they have added support for third-party MFI game pads. Now, what that is, is there are game pads, like controller pads, you can get for your iOS device for playing games. DJI have added support that you can use them now with your phone when flying the Spark. So if you are using your phone in Wi-Fi mode only, you can put one of these control pads on and use it to control the Spark. It's quite an interesting option actually. Whilst it's not going to give you the benefits of the extra DJI controller like range and um, easier control sticks and things like that, it, and it will give you some basic functionality when using it with just a phone. So it is an option, if you do already have one of them, you can use it with the Spark. A couple of other things they've done, as I said earlier with the Inspire 2, they've added the option to adjust the gimbal yaw permanently, and I'll show you that now shortly. And they have also added this new mode for broadcasting flight ID. Now this is a mode that DJI are adding to all of their aircraft, which allows you to set the name and ID of your aircraft for their new aeroscope system that they have introduced. Now again, I'll put a link in the video to talk about that, um, but let's go and have a look and see how it works. Okay, in this bit of the video, we're now looking at the new iOS app, DJI Go version 4.1.18, because there are two little things I've noticed DJI have added, and I think they're quite relevant. The first one is they finally added gimbal yaw control. So if you find that your yaw, your gimbal center, is not looking straight, you can now adjust that like you could adjust the roll on the gimbal before. So if I go into settings, down to the gimbal, and click on adjust camera gimbal, you now have the roll and the yaw option. Now there isn't a number for yaw, unfortunately. Hopefully they'll add something like that so you know where centre was. But you now have the adjustments for the gimbal yaw and roll. So if you do find your camera is not looking straight as you would like, you can now adjust that within the app. The second thing which DJI have added is if we go under the flight controller, you've now got this option called remote identification. Now this is all part of the new DJI Aeroscope system. They appear to have added some settings that allow you to turn on and off your UUID, um, your identification and flight information. You can then put an identification name in a flight information name in. So they've added some settings for that. So at this point in time, it would appear that the option for this new DJI Aeroscope is there to be able to be turned off. You don't have to have it on, and but you can also put in some flight information as well. So you can put in a unique identification. So if you're a commercial operator, you can actually put in your identification in there. Now, I do think this Aeroscope thing is interesting. I think it's the way the industry is gonna go. Um, I think an aircraft transmitting its user ID is, is just logical. The reality is, as time goes on, there's going to be more and more of these things in the sky. It makes sense that there is some form of identification whilst aircraft are flying. But that subject in itself is a whole other video. So that's the two things I wanted to show you within the Go app. It is the gimbal yaw adjustment and the gimbal roll. 
Thank you for watching this video. It has been a little bit of a long one. I hope there has been some information there that has been helpful to you. I'm going to be doing quite a few more videos on the Inspire 2 over the next couple of weeks, actually, because I've got some stuff I want to show you guys, and i got some other things um, to talk about as well. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel, and I will do another one again soon.